Man, we are moving right along. So with a project like this and something that is as big as putting a LS swap in a 1988 Honda Accord, there are so many things that need to be custom. And with doing this project, one thing that you have to focus on, well, if you're doing a similar project, what you have to focus on is time management as far as what parts you need because certain things need to happen before the next things can happen. For example, the motor's ready to go in, but I don't want to put the motor in yet without running the brake line. So in this video, we're going to get into running brake lines and continuing to make progress to get this thing done. And now, you're watching the If You're Gonna Post a Picture That's Just a Quote, You Don't Need a Caption That's Just the Quote of the Quote That You Just Posted channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Alrighty, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another video. So right now, my main concern with the Honda Accord is I want to get the brake lines ran. So I'm just gonna be making all of these from scratch. So what I have right here, this is just a brake line. This is 3 16th line. And then I have my fittings. So this fitting right here, this is for a 3 16th line. So that means the inside is a 3 16th, but the outside, the thread pattern is actually 3 8 by 24 because that's the T that I have. So I have this, that's gonna get flared, then it's gonna go into the T, and then, you know what, let me just explain to you how exactly I'm going to be running the brakes. So I just wanna go ahead and draw this out so that way it's a little bit easier for you to understand. So this right here, that's actually the master cylinder with the reservoir on it. So this is the master, this just has one output. So from here, we're gonna have brake lines going to a T, and this T is female here, female here, female there and that T is going to be going to another T that's also female, female, female. So there's going to be a brake line between here with all the fittings that I was talking about earlier so the pipe's got to be flared. So either way we have the master cylinder, one T, that T goes to an additional T, then this one over here is going to be going to a proportion valve that I have where you can adjust the brake pressure for plus or minus, so that's more or less, and then that single one is going to be going to the rear. So that's rear right, rear left, and then this other one that we still have over here, that one's going to be going to the front left and front right. So every one of these needs its own fitting and its fitting needs to be the size that corresponds with it. So that first T is going to have something like this, really short, in between there. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the camera down, I'm going to get to work, I'm going to make everything. So as you can see, we have the system laid out for the most part. So here it goes, it comes out of the master, comes to this T, comes over to that T, and then this one on this first T goes up, over, and around, 
all the way over here it's the top line and then it goes to this this is adjustable so that way you can adjust the pressure for the rear brakes so then there's going to be one line going in and around and that's the only other line i still need to make that line is going to go all the way back to another t and then go to back left and then back right so that's this t this t is from the master over to the rear brakes and then over to this t now this t is pretty self-explanatory that's front left brake and then this one follows all the way around and that's actually the lower one that comes down and continues and goes to the front right brake. So when it comes to running brakes, the hardest thing is to make sure that you have all the correct fittings, all the correct line sizes, and all the correct thread pitch. Now, when you're doing it, you just gotta make sure that it's consistent. There's no right or wrong way to do it, and you're not gonna do it exactly how I'm doing it. You just gotta make sure, again, everything is consistent, and I would recommend 3 16th line. Also, the line, there's a bunch of different materials. There's copper line, brass I believe I may be wrong on that but the line that I'm using is a galvanized steel it's a little bit harder to work with but I think this should hold up the best I don't know that's what I got a good deal on galvanized steel no reason why I use it no reason why I didn't I actually read on a form that you should either way so the next thing that I want to do that bottom line has got to be finished out and then also there's some other stuff that I want to get into on the engine bay and I think that we'll try to put that in this video as well and actually that next step I want to move into it right away so what we have right here this is just the upper radiator support but we're not going to be using that anymore as a support this is basically just a cover and we don't need access to the top of the radiator because we have the expansion tank so that could just be tucked in there ready to go so if you can see that sits right there and the idea is I want to make this a little bit bigger and then have a nice flat piece of metal right here with a bunch of dimple dies in it just because I'm into that that looks really good that's what I want to do so all of this is going to be cut out right along here this line cut over there and then we're going to bring a flat piece of metal underneath it weld it in fold over the edge we'll actually fold over the edge and then weld it in once it's welded in we're going to go ahead and do the dimple dies and i just got some dimple dies they're actually punch and flare dies i got them from eastwood you don't need to drill a big gigantic hole first just big enough for that bolt to get through and that looks really good and i'll show you that a little bit more when we get into that so i want to get this cut out get that piece of metal whipped up and then we'll go from there So as you can see now, now that that's cut out, that's looking really good. I just got this little piece of metal whipped up. So this piece is gonna go behind it, weld together from the back, and then that edge is gonna fold over really nicely just to follow suit with all this. So it's gonna go straight across from there to there bunch of dimple dies in it looking really cool and I think at this point you can see where this is going so I'm gonna go ahead and get that bent and then after it's bent we're gonna get it welded in So at this point, it looks like this. 
and what we have here these are just half inch holes and the reason why it's a half inch hole is because we have this this is the punch and flare die from Eastwood I actually got two of them I got a one and a half and at two and a half, the two and a half, we're gonna be using it very soon in another project. The one and a half is gonna be perfect for this one. So the way that this works is you can see the little dimple flare right there. And that goes in just like that. And then you take this, this is the back side of it. And it's really important once you place this on, you gotta make sure that the dimple is gonna be going in the direction that you want it to go. So now that it's on there by hand and also it comes with these washers it's important to run these washers you got to make sure you have them on there so this is how it looks front and back and then we just take right here I have an 18 you could put this on a gun but I wouldn't recommend it it might get a little bit crazy so I'm just gonna do it by hand just go ahead and punch it down and what this is gonna do is it's gonna punch it and then once it gets punched out see this piece right here that's the punch piece and then this piece made it up with the male side that's the actual flare there it goes it just punched it and then what you want to do right here you see how there's that little gap right there you want to get the metal and the dies completely sandwiched together. Once it's sandwiched together, once you can't tighten it anymore, that's how you know you're good to go. There we go, just till it's flush. And then, and then I'll throw it on here just to take it off. right here that's what got punched out and then if you see this that's what that leaves beautiful nice flare so Eastwood they actually offer these in a bead and a flare this one is the flare the bead is a little bit more flat the difference is the one that I have you can actually see it coming in a little bit more but on different applications you might not want this to stick out so bead and flare is what they offer flare is what I got bead looks really good too so this piece once this goes on the front of the car Dude, it's gonna set it off. Dude, that looks phenomenal. Eastwood punch and flare dies. You don't really need much at all. All you need is a drill bit that goes up to a half inch hole, 18 millimeter ratchet. I don't even know if it's 18. It's probably SAE. I'm probably saying the wrong thing. Anyways, either way, dude, that looks phenomenal. That to me just ties the entire front end together. But now we gotta go right into getting it prepped out so that way we can get it painted out. So I'm just gonna skim a little bit of filler on it. We don't need much at all because all the metal is so close already. Once we get a little bit of filler on it, we'll go into a primer. Then that base coat for V6 is the color code, clear coat, slap it on there. I'm hyped, dude. We got the primer mixed up and ready to go. And as you can see right here, just a little bit of body filler just to smooth it over. One thing about an engine bay, it's completely different than the exterior of the car in the sense that nothing ever has to be perfectly smooth or perfectly blocked or perfectly flat as long as it's nice and consistent and you don't see any holes from your body filler or any rough edges. It should be pretty fine. So we got this one right there. And then we also got this piece I'm going to do that at the same time.
Dang, dude, that right there, that looks phenomenal. Eastwood, punch, and flare dies. 10 out of 10, for sure. Looks awesome. This is the 1.5 inch die. I also got a 2.5 inch for some other stuff that I'm going to be using in the very near future. And every single project that I do from here on out, we're just gonna blast it with holes because that's what we do around here. So the primer, the primer, the primer is going to show you all the imperfections that we still have. And we definitely do have a couple more. So what I know, so what I'm gonna end up having to do, sand it down just a little bit more. There's a couple high spots, couple low spots, couple little holes, sand it, then prime it again if I need to. And then we should be pretty good to go for that sealer base coat and clear coat. And that is looking really good. Also, we got the brake lines. I know I kind of just rushed over them, but I wanted to get them in there. I wanted to get it done and I wanted to work on this front piece because the front piece, that's the flex piece, the brake lines. Yeah, they're just brake lines. So what we have going on, I got to get out of here because tomorrow, if you're watching this video with a few hours early that I posted it Friday, tomorrow there's actually a car meet that I'm hosting. It's kind of like a cruise. So what my idea is, is we're all gonna meet up at about 10.30, 10.45, then roll out at 11. We're gonna go on a 25 mile cruise. Just me, you, bunch of cars hanging out doing something a little bit different because in Orlando, phase two officially starts Friday. So Saturday, we are good to go. I hope I will see you there. I'll put the info at the end of this video and I plan on doing more of these in the future. So if this was too short notice for you, sorry about that, but we will have another one real soon and I will see you real soon. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe, do all the stuff. You know what it is, YouTube. Check out the merch. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.